Good afternoon, I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to those of you watching online at onespotmedia.com. The country has recorded a 5% increase in the murder tally for the first quarter of this year when compared to the corresponding period last year. That's according to the latest figures from the Jamaica Constabulary Force. 354 persons were murdered between January 1 and March 31. This is 18 more murders when compared with the same period last year. 49 murders were committed in St. Catherine North, 47 in St. Andrew South, 37 in Westmoreland, 30 in Clarendon, and 22 in St. James. Now, the parishes that recorded less than 10 cases of murders during the period are Manchester, St. Elizabeth, Portland, Trelawney, St. Andrew North, and Kingston Central. Guns accounted for 84% of the implement instruments used to commit killings and knives 5%. One man is dead following a motor vehicle crash along the North Coast Highway in the vicinity of Retreat Heights District, Falmouth, on Wednesday evening. The unidentified victim is believed to be in his mid-60s. Reports are that at around 10.45, the driver of a Toyota Axio motor car was traveling from Falmouth to Duncan's in the parish when upon reaching a section of the roadway, an unidentified man stepped into the path of the vehicle. He was hit and died on the spot. The body is of dark complexion and was clad in black shirt and a pair of black pants. The police are appealing to anyone with information that can assist in their investigation to contact the Falmouth Police at 954-3271, Crime Stop at 311-811, Police 119 Emergency Number, or the nearest police station. The removal of health care workers and patients from the Cornwall Regional Hospital is close to completion. That's according to Director of Nursing Services at Cornwall Regional, Matron Gillian Legister. Our relocation exercise is now at 98% completion. And what this means is that our patients and most of our staff would have been relocated from the main building of the hospital to other areas such as the quadrants and the Falmouth Public General Hospital. Matron Legister says as the adjustments to service delivery continue, measures are still in place to continue providing assistance to staff members who were affected by the conditions in the main building. or moderately to severely affected staff members that they, they have been on a weekly basis now being seen by one of our specialists who is a pulmonologist and they are being assessed and treated. So this is also a very positive situation. The relocation of staff and patients from Cornwall Regional to the Falmouth Hospital in Trelawney and other locations has been ongoing since last week. State Minister in the Agriculture Ministry, J.C. Hutchinson, is declaring that the handout mentality in the agriculture sector would have to end immediately. The minister made the assertion while addressing farmers in Yala St. Thomas recently. The details from TVJ's O'Shane Masters. According to State Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, J.C. Hutchinson, the gimme gimme mentality of some farmers has been a major hindrance to growth in the sector. That's why he's pushing for immediate changes for a boost to the government's growth agenda. Anybody who is going to get anything through RADA must know they are going to go into agriculture as a business. That is what you're going to go into agriculture for, as a business. You must make profit out of agriculture. We have a culture whereby it is one where we look a handout. That handout is going to cut out now. The gimme gimme mentality cannot drive agriculture. In the meantime, the minister says the ministry is trying to implement a policy that will see funds from the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, going directly into the hands of farmers. This is why. Last year, there's much of the funds went into the hands of others 
other than the farming community. And as such, we did not have that increase in production. We are now looking at a different dispensation. We are now going to look at the organizations that exist and those areas where we do not have organizations, put organizations in place so that the funds coming through RADA can go directly to those farming organizations. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. Meanwhile, as the Agriculture Ministry continues efforts to reduce the quantity of onions being imported for domestic consumption, farmers in the Agro Park in Yala St. Thomas are reporting success with their yields. 2014 to 2015, 10.33 hectares was established by 29 farmers and we harvested 50 tons. In 2016, 10.2 hectares was established by the same 39 farmers and what we harvested 177.94 tons. In 2017, 9.99 hectares established by 56 farmers, 107.17 tons were reaped. So what are the figures for the 2017-18 crop year? Um, because of weather condition and um, us not being able to get tractor service in time for production, we only able to establish 8.9 hectares by 51 farmers. To date, 32.44 tons was reaped from 2.09 hectares. Of this production, the major marketer was Spanish grain, where farmers were contracted to produce and sell onion at $60 per pound or $132 per kg. State Minister in the Agriculture Ministry, J.C. Hutchinson, however, pointed out that pointed out what the ministry will be doing to help those farmers who have been affected by the recent changes in climate. What we are going to be looking at is seeing if we can, might we give you a push start with might be the seeds and fertilizer. We're going to discuss it with the CO to see how best we can assist you to overcome that problem. In other words, we are going to say to you, we'll assist you, but you might not have to pay back for some of the inputs that we might uh, be giving you. Following recent criticisms about the slow pace at which the Jamaica medical marijuana industry seems to be developing, the government says action is being taken by addressing the impediments Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Audley Shaw says a meeting was held with representatives of the Cannabis Licensing Authority, CLA, on Tuesday to explore and discuss issues primarily relating to its regulatory role as well as activities in the wider marijuana and hemp industries. Mr. Shaw stated that matters regarding impediments involve his ministry as well as the Ministry of Health. He said every effort must be made to ensure that Jamaica is not left behind in the aggressive growth taking place in the cannabis industry. The Cannabis Licensing Authority, which falls under the Ministry of Commerce, under the Industry and Commerce Ministry, was established in 2015 under the Dangerous Drug Act, Amendment Act that is, and it is mandated to establish and regulate Jamaica's ganja and hemp industries. Now, there are recommendations being given to the government based on reports of development plans for a township in Bernard Lodge, St. Catherine, to accommodate 17,000 housing solutions. Stakeholders are proposing wide consultations before the development takes place. The matter received public attention after Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced the plans during last month's budget debate. Yesterday, opposition spokesman on national physical planning and development, Anthony Hilton, called for the government to be transparent in its development of Bernard Lodge by providing more details on the matter. Chairman of the All-Island Jamaica Cane Farmers Association, Alan Rickards, asserts that lands in the area are highly valuable, so consultation is essential in answering some critical questions. We are talking about some of the finest agricultural lands in any part of the country. What we really need and what we are requesting stroke demanding is an integrated plan for agriculture that includes the land that is necessary to resuscitate the monument factory, how the irrigation water will be deployed, 
and how much will be diverted to domestic use, and therefore have a total integrated plan for both what it is that they are attempting to do and the primary need of agriculture and agriculture crops. Mr. Rickards was speaking on RJR's Beyond the Headlines on Wednesday. Come next week Sunday, the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information will begin its celebration of Mathematics Week in an effort to improve the teaching and learning process of mathematics in primary and secondary schools across the island. The ministry has placed emphasis on the national maths policy. National Mathematics Coordinator in the ministry, Tamika Benjamin, said coaches will be deployed under the math program to provide professional development for teachers. Another element of the program, which is a part of a wider um, strategy to increase the number of trained teachers in the system, would be the Math Science and Technical Vocational Educational Scholarship Program. And that program has seen the ministry providing funding to more than 400 student teachers um, to pursue degrees in math, math education, secondary math education, since 2016. This, she believes, will help not only students and parents, but also the general society. Activities for the week will include the church service on the 15th of April at 9 a.m. at the Life Center Tabernacle, Church of God of Prophecy in Spanish Town. The event will be launched, the week's activities, sorry, will be launched on Monday the 16th at the Knowledge and Innovation Lecture Theatre at the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean. In an effort to take the activities outside of the corporate area, the Ministry will facilitate a mathematics roadshow in the Neville Antonia Park in Port Antonio on the 17th of April. The Mathematics Expo will also be hosted at the University of the West Indies on April 19. This year's celebration from April 15 to 20 will be the Ministry's fifth staging. And we go now to international news. In the United States, U.S. President Donald Trump is taunting Russia on Twitter in the aftermath of a suspected chemical weapons attack by the Syrian government over the weekend. For the latest, we join the CNN. The missiles are coming at least according to President Trump, who days after an alleged chemical weapons attack in Syria, tweeted, Russia vows to shoot down any and all missiles fired at Syria. Get ready, Russia, because they will be coming. Nice and new and smart. And then he called Syrian President Bashar al-Assad a gas-killing animal who kills his people and enjoys it. He's tweeted himself into a corner. He's the one who said in his tweets that this is unacceptable, he's going to have to take action. And having taken action a year ago, he really can't do anything less. The Kremlin responded, saying that they don't engage in Twitter diplomacy. A spokesperson adding, quote, The pretext on the use of chemical weapons in Duma is fabricated and cannot be used as an excuse for some forceful actions. Defense Secretary James Mattis says they're still assessing the intelligence on the situation. Is the U.S. military ready right now to conduct a, counter, a retaliatory strike in order? Uh, we stand ready to provide military options if they're appropriate. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons is expected to hold a meeting Monday to discuss the alleged use of chemical weapons in Syria as they prepare to launch a fact-finding mission on the ground. At the United Nations, the Security Council failed to pass a resolution that would have established its own independent investigation due to a Russian veto, the country's sixth veto related to chemical weapons in Syria. And we go down to sports. It's just a few days to go before the season's first classic races are run at Caymanas Park. And the champion two-year-old of 2017, Marquesas and Honey Ryder, have been working very well in preparation for the Guineas Classics. Dennis Walters has that story. The Bay Colts Marquesas was voted champion two-year-old after capturing the Jamaica two-year-old stakes over a mile for his third consecutive victory. With five races last season and his three wins in two months at the back end of the season, this led trainer Michael Marlowe to rest to the talented Colt. However, on his return to racing, he suffered his third defeat from six career starts, finishing fourth by three lengths behind El Professor in the Guinness Trial Stakes. 
Since that defeat, Marquesas has been stepped up at exercise and on Friday, April 6, the Colt with Shane Ellis astride galloped to seven furlongs in 1 minute 27 seconds and a mile in 1 minute 40 seconds. On Tuesday, April 10, he got his final gallop, clocking three furlongs in 36 and a three fifths. Well, it's, it's my kind of preparation. Now I train. I figure I'll give him a little work to do on Friday morning. It will be eight days away. And, you know, whatever he does on Tuesday morning would be just um, to blow his chest off. And we have five days after that for the race. And I think it's enough recovery time between, you know. So. You know, we're going, to, we're going to war, so we have to do what's right for the horse and bring him over there proper. Meanwhile, the Richard as Unconditioned Honey Rider has claimed the favorite tag for the Phillies 1000 Guineas after beating the Colts without exception Uncle Frank and Rambunctious Lynx over a mile in 1 minute and 40 seconds. But according to Azan, he is not taking much comfort from that performance. When she beat the Colts earlier on, but the Colts that she beat are not the main contenders for the Colts skinnies, so I don't know if you can use that as a guide. But as I said, she's been training well, and I think she's be, she'll be very competitive in the race. Since that February 17 race, Honey Rider missed the Hotline and the Thornbird Stakes prep races, but has been drilled for the Classic. She has been cantering nine furlongs and galloping six furlongs, posting one minute 14 and two fifths on Saturday morning, the best time posted by any of the fillies at exercise. She worked very well and um, her preparation has gone really well and I hope she'll continue until the race. 14 three-year-old fillies are expected to see classic glory in the 1,000 guineas on Saturday. For TVJ Sports, I am Denise Walters. And that wraps up the midday news. Join us at 7 for the primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, I'm Herman Green. Good afternoon.